Hi, this is Lorena, and I wanted to do a video for you that a client asked me to do. Um, and it has to do with cutting vinyl and using that heat press back there. Um, I don't do this often, and I thought this would be a good video. I did do a whole bunch of other videos, but to edit them, it's going to take me a while. So I thought this would be a good video because I think it's going to be pretty easy to edit. But I uh, want you to know that I use my Cricut cutting machine and um, it is a design that the client gave me. So I also had to figure out how to digitize the design. And so that took me a while. But I'm not going to go into that. I just wanted to share how I cut the vinyl and how I did the heat press. Now let me share with you one of the reasons why I got the heat press is because I want to kind of expand and be very versatile. Yes, I do long arm quilting and I do piecing and I do uh, embroidery work but I also thought it would be nice to learn how to do some vinyl because there's a huge market on vinyl out there and I just wanted to learn the skill of it so let me just say this I am not a professional as a matter of fact I'm not good at it I'm I'm being honest you know just I've made some major mistakes I've made some really dumb mistakes and one of them is this it is something so simple I did not mirror the design when you do vinyl you have to make sure that you mirror the design and I didn't mirror it I was in a hurry and I just pushed cut and also another mistake so I'm sharing with you that I'm learning so in this video you see the process of me trying to figure things out and how I kind of try to work uh, situations or work uh, problem solve as I'm learning and then this design yeah I cut the tip of the wing off um, just understand that when you are trying something new you are gonna waste product so I'm wasting some vinyl by learning the good thing is vinyl is not that expensive but you are gonna waste some product I really do hope you like this video I hope you like my process of learning I hope you like watching me make mistakes well, I already showed you my mistakes. I don't think I videotaped them. But yes, I've made some mistakes. And so I really do thank you for watching. And I'll see you later, okay? Bye. So I have my Cricut mat. And I have vinyl. And I wanted to share with you that when you're doing vinyl, you have to have the shiny side face it down. Um, I know it's a horrible cut. But as long as it's kind of straight here. But I'll put the design where I want it to be. This is going to be a layered design. And it's two layers. And it's going to have this on top. Just know that anytime you do vinyl. That the silky side needs to be facing down. And you need to mirror your image. And I'm going to do that for these bags. Hopefully you can see the screen. Um, here's my design. This is a shadow. And I'm going to go go. Make sure you mirror your image. So it flips it like this it wasn't when it wasn't flipped it was like that and now you flip it um, you hit this button it says mirror image for iron-ons and then we're gonna hope go to go I have my settings for vinyl now that it's loaded it says loading mat and then I'm just gonna hit go on the machine so you could really barely tell I mean I even if I put it in the camera you're not gonna tell that there is the vinyl cut it's really barely seen so what I do is I pinch this corner area and I cut it and then I, my favorite seam ripper you can use it for this too go ahead and start uh, holding your material down and start working from corner to corner And you want to do this as seamless as you possibly can, just like that. So this is the back shadowing of the design. Earlier this design was doing two different pieces, and I don't want it to do it that way. I want it to be one complete design. So what I did is I hit this button. I already did it. It's called Weld, and then it made it one complete design. And then once I did that, I don't have to have two different cuts. And this is how it'll look on your mat. I went ahead and hit uh, flip it or mirror. And then I have the material here. Just like that. I have the material there. I'm going to load it. I'm going to say go. Asking me to load it. I already have my settings for vinyl.
So usually I like holding it to the side and then just start kind of getting more of this structure. Try not to have my hands in your way. Uh oh. Just like that. And then just kind of pull it through. Just like that. And then like here, the A like poking the edge of it up, lifting it. And there's Team Wingman. Um, it's supposed to be it is going to be multi-layered just like this. The reason I created this shadow that if I would have just done Wingman, you could see that whatever they already had on here, you could see in the back. So I created this shadow to cover up all that lettering, and then this is going to sit appropriately right over the lettering, and you won't even know that anybody did anything. I was trying to find different positions, but this is the best position, and she said that she liked it. I saw online uh, these little foam pieces with Teflon on them. They were like $35 for, or pretty pricey for just a square block of foam with Teflon. So I thought this would be a good tutorial on how to, um, how I'm going to create my own cheap version of what I saw for $35. The Teflon sheet was probably like $10 and I just, someone gave me this foam. So I'm just going to go and sew all the way around on this Teflon. I'm going to decrease my stitches by I think 2 inches instead of 2 and a half. And I'm just going to uh, sew all the way around and I'm going to leave the bottom area open. And that's what I'm going to do. But the reason I did this and I wanted to share this is because when I put the design on this area, it's going to sink in and it's going to kind of get weird. I want to go ahead and I want it kind of like a pillow that I could shove in here. And it creates this kind of foundation to where when I put the design on here, it kind of pops up more. Not wrinkly, it's a little bit more flatter because I'm going to have to heat press this down. And then I'm going to have to heat press this next after that. So you see that I shoved the Teflon bag inside here. Try to get everything out of the way of the machine. Just like that. Try to keep it as straight as. And then you have my the Teflon on top. Don't heat your hand, okay? One. So then I'm going to remove this. So I placed uh, the design on here and I'm going to go ahead and use more of this sticky stuff to hold it down. So it's this kind of stuff, leftover sticky stuff. And then I'm going to hold it for like 15 seconds. And there's the design. You're supposed to remove all this with the cool, kind of warm, cool setting, but you could peel it off right now. Isn't that beautiful? And this is a shoulder on carry-on. So the great thing about it is even though it looks kind of weird on the side, when it's on the shoulder, it's going to be angled, so it's going to look pretty, it's going to look nice. I really do hope you like this video on how to uh, do a job with vinyl. This is kind of like my third or fourth one as I'm learning and going along. I do have some embroidery videos coming in. I'm so excited. And I do have some other videos. It's just like my life went crazy. I don't know. You know? So, yes, I thank you for watching and I'll see you hopefully sooner than later. Okay? Bye.
You know, you would think when your kids get older, the life as a parent would get easier. They're tougher to deal with. <sighs> yeah. So, please join Lorena's quilting Facebook group. Uh, yeah. Talk to you later. <laughs> 2017. <laughs> please calm down. You have been so busy. <laughs> I know, drama queen, right? Yeah, okay. A SVG design so I can cut it on my Cricut and all the other, yeah. My three cutters up there. Don't judge me. But, um, anyway. <laughs> I digress. 